Hello, and welcome to Vicon Valeris Tutorials. In this video, we will discuss the video channel settings screens and their functionalities and different configuration options. In the Configuration tab, select Resources and Video Channels. The Video Channels screen is divided into two parts. In the center, we can see the device list, and on the right we have our specific devices settings. The Video Channels are grouped by the model of the camera or encoder they are connected through. This allows groups of video channels to be configured with common settings in one action. We'll demonstrate this later. Click to select the video channel you want to configure. The right portion of the screen is divided to tabs, channel properties, streams, recording, picture settings, masking, and the 360 degree option a camera with PTZ or motorized lens capabilities will also have a PTZ tab. We will discuss each tab separately. Channel Properties In this tab, you can change the display name of the video device. This name will be updated on all resource lists in the system. You can see properties about it, such as its type, its vendor and model, its device name, and its numeric ID, if set. You can choose whether you want the camera to be displayed or not. This is a general shutoff of the channel and will apply to all users. Web config opens the device's web page, allowing access if needed to specific configuration screens not available to Valeris. Linked audio resources. If any audio resources are already linked, they will be listed here. If not, clicking on add audio resources will open up a list of all audio resources and you may choose the ones you want to link. So starting the camera live or playing it back will automatically play the audio as well. To the right, you can see the snapshot button. Clicking this button will take a new snapshot of the camera current view and will show it for reference. This is useful if in the future your camera is moved and you would like to return it to its correct position. This also lets you easily understand what camera you are configuring by showing its current view. This is the Streams tab. Most video channels will offer multiple streams. This is done for various reasons. The main reasons are, if you are viewing a camera in the quad view, which means it's in a small tile, you don't need a very high resolution, and so you can set the stream to a lower resolution and save bandwidth and display resources. The second reason if your VMS is set to record only events, you can set the regular stream resolution to a low resolution, and then, when an event occurs, switch to a higher resolution. The VMS default settings are set once a device is added to the system as follows. One stream, top resolution supported by the camera, and maximum frame rate. Second stream is VGA resolution and its maximum frame rate. Note, if generic RTSP is used as the device's protocol, these stream parameters are set in the device itself. However, it's important to set them on the screen as well, as Valeris uses these settings to determine which to stream to the monitor screen. After choosing these settings, click on Save on the bottom right, or to apply these settings to multiple devices and save the need to individually configure each one, click the Apply To button. The list will show all video channels, which can be configured in the same way. Select the devices you want to configure from the list by checking the checkbox next to them. And note, to select all cameras, check the uppermost checkbox. Now, click Save. Applying settings to other cameras can be of the streams, recording, and picture settings. Recording. Each channel can be set to record video. Recording is turned on by default for video channels when a device is added to the recording server. You can toggle recording on or off by clicking this switch. Limit retention. By toggling this switch on, you will limit the recording retention for the specific channel. Set a maximum number of days to hold recorded video before it's overwritten, even if there is still free space on the drive. Below, you can set a recording schedule. The default schedule is a 24-7 one, but by clicking the drop-down menu, you can click on New Schedule and plan a schedule that fits your own needs. You can name it, change its repeat pattern, and configure exactly which days or even on certain dates and times. We'll discuss creating schedules in a separate video.
Now, you may choose the recording mode out of the following options. Continuous records all the time according to your schedule. Event records only when a defined event happens. Continuous and event lets you record on schedule a certain stream, and when an event occurs, the recording switches to a different stream, typically in order to get a better video of the event. When choosing continuous and event, you will get the option to choose which stream you want for your continuous recording and which for the event. By default, the event that triggers recording is motion. You can specify other events that trigger recording by clicking on the Specify Events button and picking an event and resources from the list. Picture Settings Under this tab, you can set the various picture settings the camera displays. Each device will have different settings according to its capabilities and features, such as rotate the display of the camera, change the visual settings, change WDR, and more, depending on the device. To apply these settings to multiple devices, and save the need to individually configure each one. Click the Apply To button. The list will show all video channels on the same model devices, which can be configured in the same way. Select the devices you want to configure from the list by checking the checkbox next to them. And note, to select all cameras, check the uppermost checkbox. Now click Save. Applying settings to other cameras can be of the streams, recording, and properties, as seen on the top. Masking. From this tab, you can set a mask to cover a certain object or area of the picture from users that are not permitted to view them. Unlike creating a mask in the camera, this one is created in the VMS, which will allow removing it later if the appropriate user authorization exists. To create a mask, simply click and drag over an area in the display box. Once you release your mouse click, the mask will appear. You may name the mask or just click save. Let's go ahead and take a look at our mask in the monitoring screen. As you can see, this area is masked. Now, because I have the permission to unmask the video, I can remove the mask by clicking up here in the tile settings bar. Note, unmasking is possible for live or for playback of the video. 360. This option allows to enable dewarping of hemispheric cameras. We'll discuss this tab in detail in a separate video. PTZ. This tab will show when a camera is either a PTZ camera or uses a motorized lens. Note, you can click the button to make such a camera appear as a fixed, non-PTZ one on the resource list. This is typically done with motorized cameras. We will discuss this tab in detail in a separate video. After following these configuration steps for all of your video channels, applying to the same model ones and saving, they should be all set and ready to work as you configured.